And so if you have the right data, that's what I mean, it's an identity. There's no, I didn't run anything. There's no, there's no regression, right? If you have the right cash flows and the right accruals, this works very well. Turns out that actually, okay, this is what they told me in Europe. So in China, the cash flow statement is on a direct method, is that right? Okay. Well, this should work a lot better than in the US then, right? Because the basic setup is you have the cash flow amounts on the, on the statement of cash flows and you have accruals on the balance sheet, right? Once you have that, you can split the accruals into the non-discretion discretionary performance. Basically, you have to organize them in meaningful groups. So let's say if you have uh, cash collection from sales, that will be related to accounts receivable and deferred revenue. Right? If you have uh, cost of goods sold and uh, cash paid to suppliers, okay, again you can split the crawl into discretionary and non-discretionary. Right? So in this sense, I, I have to look at the cash flow statement here, but having a clean identification of the cash flows into meaningful groups on the statement of cash flow should allow you to, to do a lot better split. Right? In the US it's screwed up because the Cash flow from operations is derived on the indirect method, so the lines there don't mean much. Okay? But if you have the right lines on the on the on cash flows, this should work a lot better. Okay? Um, oh, and uh, what I forgot here is so depreciation expense where discretion is, and how much is the duration? Well, because depreciation expense is not one accrual but a series of accruals, so depreciable um, the duration is one half of the depreciable. Right? Because it's just a annuity. Assuming it's a straight line and there's no residual value. Right? Is this clear? Basic point is if you have the right data, boom, it just falls out. Uh, for working capital across, days receivable outstanding is the duration of the account receivable, right? Days inventory outstanding, that's the duration of the inventory, right? So these existing intuitions. Uh, it's a nice way to organize them. In the property casualty industry, the cash flows for the main accruals are disclosed. So you can do it there. Uh, pension accruals, you can do it somewhat. So anytime you have a clear identification, um, this works well. If you don't, I'm still thinking about this, but I think you basically have to run the accruals and cash flow from operations to find T. Okay? That's kind of. We're back in the statistical world, but better than now. Okay? And so that will be your estimate. So what will be in the area term will be based on discretionary course. Okay? Uh, it's not the best way, but uh, yeah, at least you have a good reason why you do it. It's that, so it's the concurrent cash flows and the associated flows. Right? Questions? Okay. Uh, Something like that, I think. I'm moving through, through that. Yeah. Any questions? Because I'm going uh, to a conclusion here. <laughs> <laughs> so, summing up what we learned from this, it's kind of a different way to think about the discretion and accruals. And Something that didn't come up in this presentation, but came up in some other presentations, was um, what does discretion mean here exactly? Because all the people think of discretion as sort of the dark discretion, right? So managers tweaking the numbers for uh, nefarious reasons, right? Um, is that in here? Yes, that's in here, but the notion of discretion here is much broader, right? So the notion of discretion here is simply anything that makes the realizations different from estimates. This could be because the managers are tweaking the numbers, or it could be simply because the environment is very unpredictable. Right? So this notion of discretion is very broad, but it's more precise to define the sense as at least I know what I mean. Otherwise, I mean, yes, we know managers tweak the numbers, but what does, it's hard to actually observe this. Right? You know, who, you know, who actually does this? Uh, all right, so that's the discretion of accruals here. Uh, the main idea was that the cash flows pinned down the time and magnitude of the concurrent associated accruals. So these are non-discretionary. Uh, 
So that relates to what I was talking about earlier. You know, when you look at, you know, closer at some of these things, there's a very natural way to go. We don't have to do crazy things, right? Why should we run Jones model when, you know, there's a lot more natural way to go about this, right? Just in terms of the right and the right. And then for the cross chip discretionary, further simplification on the cross uh, duration, which is basically the horizon of this, right? And so that notion of role duration, I think, uh, that's, is, a, is a helpful way to organize the thinking about this question of roles. Uh, the imperial applications are definitely a work in process. So if you have some suggestions here, I'm still thinking about this. Um, uh, I don't know, it's one of these things I can't quite get what the best way to go here. Uh, if you have clean data, it works very well. but. That's not very clean that, you know, this, you, you want basically the right cash flows and the right approach and it works well. If not, uh, you're back in you know, the messy world, right? Um, I think that's pretty much it. So thank you very much.